A symbiotic ecosystem is necessary in every aspect of life, especially in how we interrelate with our colleagues at work. Just for context, let us back paddle a bit. During our school years, we were entrusted with some group work where a few students were bundled together to tackle a task. If you remember well, there were always one or two who did not do their assignment, which forced the others to pick up the slack if they wanted better marks. The same happens now at work. Everyone has their specific tasks that they deal with. If one person drops the ball, the symbiotic system breaks down, forcing others to take up more work than they can carry. This leads to exhaustion, resentment towards our colleagues who have essentially become our friends, ultimately leading to some mental health problems such as anxiety, stress, and in some cases, depression. Needless to mention, these health challenges cost both the employer and the employee billable hours through sick offs and reduced productivity. In our discussion this evening, we figure out how to manage our work relationships in a way that will help us be our best selves at our places of employ with mental health therapist Gariso Hawthorne. Gariso, thank you so much for coming on First Issues. We are now discussing, you know, managing our workplace relationships so that they can help us, um, you know, manage our mental health. So how do we erect boundaries in our places of employment without seeming like we are difficult people? I think it starts at the top. When management lays the foundation through trainings, through uh, open communication with the lower management or the other workers, then at least when you come in as workers, you know what you expect. The attitude should always be, I go to work, do my job, do what I need to do, and I go home. But we forget that we spend eight, nine, 10, 12 hours with those people sometimes even trapped in a small office, and you are forced to have a relationship, not forced like in a bad way, but you are forced to have a relationship with those people. But how do you create boundaries? And those boundaries should be respected and should not be crossed. And what happens if something like that happens? When top management uh, sets a good example that, yes, you come to work, you do what you need to do, in a professional manner and you leave, then, okay, then we are robots. Because after all, we are social beings. We love talking to people we are sitting next to. We love getting to know each other. So I think as an individual, once again, you can just set those personal boundaries yourself. When your colleagues know that this is what is acceptable, then they'll be forced to respect your wishes, they will respect your boundaries and just cultivate an environment where colleagues just getting along. <laughs> because if we don't get along, then our mental health is affected. So yes, that environment should be cultivated. And as co-workers, we should work hard to do that. But in instances where um, boundaries have been crossed, because it can happen, how can, how can that conflict be resolved without ruining otherwise good work relationships? Because sometimes people can find themselves as friends at work, you know, they work well together, and they just have that certain level of rapport with each other. But then this thing comes and then, you know, the foundation of that relationship is shaken. We know that in most cases when uh, someone is upset with person A, we like going to person B to talk about person A. And in a work environment, that is a no-no because that starts creating toxic uh, environment or toxic relationships in a workplace. Uh, so the first thing that person A and B should do is talk 
I don't know if I did my <laughs> ABC, but they should talk. Okay, you go to the person in a nice way, professional way, uh, and let them know what happened. And if it escalates to a point where they cannot resolve those differences, then uh, management can be involved. But then that's the extreme case where it can damage work relationships. So, but communication, talk to your people, talk to your, uh, your colleagues and let them know or let that person know that they've crossed that boundary before it escalates to something that is not good. You know, it does happen that sometimes people can't resolve conflict within themselves and you're right, they would then escalate their matter to management, but really that should be the last, um, you know, resort. But what do you think the parties should be prepared for should that be, um, you know, the action plan that they wish to take up? And management really should be the last resort. Uh, if, the, if both parties cannot come to some form of agreement, then a mediator, that is not management. They can find uh, a mediator and you talk it out. But we know that the moment it goes to management, someone might even lose their job. Someone might be put on probation or whatever might happen. And that relationship will be affected for a long time, if not forever. And if in an office setting, I think there should be a place where workers feel comfortable. They, uh, if there's a counselor, if there's, um, I don't know the names they might call them, they can go there and feel okay and free to voice their worries and create that environment of it's okay we are we have conflicts but before it can reach to management there's someone that you can talk to so then how how does one go about managing a relationship that has gone sour one that um failed to be restored after this level of conflict or just rather conflict altogether and we know that in most cases, people start ignoring each other. But even when you ignore each other, you can still feel that presence, that person that you probably don't like anymore. They're still there. They need that job. You need your job. So how do you work? And sometimes you might even have to share an office space, you know. And it's between two adults <laughs> and trying to make it work. And we put our differences aside because we say, after all, this is a workplace. We have to be professional about this. We have to talk about it. And instead of stabbing each other in the back and backbiting and talking bad about each other. So it's two adults be mature enough to come to some sort of agreement so that the environment can be less toxic. This program was brought to you in association with First National Bank of Botswana.